Hi, this is Finn Hansen from Finn Hansen's Leather Shop in beautiful Morro Bay, California. Finally back again with uh, another video we're going to try and do. Uh, this one's going to be another seat video. It was uh, coming up on this week's work at the shop and I figured this would make a good film. So uh, yeah, we're going to be redoing this guy um, as close, close to the original as possible, the customer wants. The old foam is shot. I've already taken the liberty of pulling this apart so a lot of the busy work is out of the way. We've uh, drilled out the rivets. There was a strip of leather on the underside riveted here that the top layer will sew to. So got rid of those already. And uh, so to keep the video short, since I like to film the entire process, uh, let's get right to it. I have pre-cut this piece of Latigo leather at about an inch and a quarter wide. And it is, uh, I've thinned it a little bit, so it's probably about a six to seven ounce right now. Enough that I will be able to stretch it and curve it around these turns rather than cutting out a big piece of leather, cutting the middle out and wasting a whole bunch of it. So let's see what we can do. Oil, like I say, oiled it a little bit so it's a little softer and more flexible. So the first step here is going to be getting some holes in this and getting this strip attached to the bottom side here. Then we can worry about the foam next. So let's see, I want this to be about that far in right there. Okay, so we're going to set the compass to that distance. Scribe a little mark all the way along the edge. Let's see how close in distance these are, how consistent these holes are in the old one. If I can mark them all out ahead of time, or most of them, or if I gotta mark them one at a time. So far, they're all looking to be the same distance. I'm gonna guess then that a little on the tight side, because I can always stretch this leather a bit. I would rather have a good tight fit than a loose one. All right, let's give this a shot. And uh, as usual, I haven't planned this out or anything, just pulled this one, this job off the shelf at the end of the day. Uh, so let's see how it goes. If we may succeed, I may fail. One way or another, we're gonna film it and see what happens. All right, marking these guys out. punch more, I can punch more and, uh, when I get there. I'm going to grab my hole punch and a hammer. Forgot to grab those. All right, move this off to the side a bit and pull uh, the stone over. So, so many holes. <laughs> All right, holes punched. Now to figure out where we're gonna start attaching these. I'm thinking, I guess the question is where I want my seam to be, where they're gonna, where the two ends are gonna meet and overlap by a little bit. And 
I'm thinking the back side would probably be the best spot for that. And again, that might show more. So let's see. Front. Yeah, let's try doing it on the front. See if I can pull that off. So I think we're going to want to, let's see, we're going to want to overlap by hmm, three, two, I'd prefer, but that's in the center. Let's try overlap three of those rivets. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to skive this in down for three holes worth because I'm going to overlap the other end with three holes of it and I don't want it to be too terribly thick right there. Let's see, where is my hands? There it is. Should have pulled that out earlier. Okay, let's see if I can get this more in the camera here. A little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and thin this guy out a little bit for the first three holes. And we're not going to set those holes till we get back around to the front again and then set those all at once. There we go. This thinning will also help us stretch it a little bit. Okay, is this area in camera? All right. I'm going to be using these uh, little tube rivets. It's the same type that were on it when I took the uh, took the seat off here. Actually, before I do that, let's get a little bit of edge coat on this strap. It's not really exposed on the underside but we might as well color that edge and make it look a little better. So we're going to be putting a little bit of edge coat here. Turn that a bit. There we go. Onto this edge. and grab a rag and wipe the excess off. Okay, so let's see if this is going to fit right here. You're going to need to put a rivet here. This is going to be a little, little tricky because i got a rivet as I go. So let me see if I can get this camera adjusted where you can see my rivet press as well as the table here. Let's see, there's the rivet press. Sorry, my shop is always fairly cluttered. There we go. Okay, guys are already set in for this, so let's start riveting away. That's good and strong. And we'll see how good I was, lucky I was on this hole spacing. Nope. Seems like it was wrong. That is compounding error is going to make those holes all not line up. Darn it. All right. I will uh, cut the camera. Be right back once I've got this in a better place to be able to uh, get a new strip of leather cut. Okay, I am back with a new uh, cut piece of Latigo. I've thinned it out, finished the edge, and gotten all up to where we need to be, minus the holes, which I am not this time going to punch all beforehand, but I'm rather going to do one at a time as we need it, figure the spacing out. So it'll be a little slower, but it's going to be a more accurate process. Ah, I forget one thing. Describe the whole distance from the edge. We'll do that. There, just a light line. We want this to kind of, as I stretch and pull it, that line will disappear. All right, so we're going to put our first hole right where the thinning stops, right there. Yeah, I pop a hole in there. 
And this time for the rest of the holes, I've got the handy rotary uh, punch. Not my favorite tool, it's a little hard on the hand, but uh, it'll work in this case. In fact, it's necessary in this case. So one at a time, we're gonna put a rivet in. I'm gonna mark and punch the next hole and set a rivet, and then mark and punch the next hole and set a rivet. And so on and so forth until we're ready for the next step. There we go. One rivet. Okay. Let's pull this back and mark it right there. Now in hindsight, it's going to make it a lot easier to describe my distance from the edge on the underside of this piece. So we'll do that bit by bit. is punch a hole set a rivet go nice and tight Camera back a little bit, get a wider angle. There we are. All right. It's been so long since I did a video, I'm not set up for it really. I need to do more. I was rather surprised at the number of uh, likes I got on the la and views on the last uh, seat video. So thank you to everybody who watched. I definitely appreciate it. Happy to share any uh, knowledge that I have. That's the point of these videos. Alright. And of course this is a little repetitive, so uh, feel free to fast forward to the next part of the video or until this riveting is done because this is going to be the same thing over and over here it looks like about 25 30 times and tight and kind of stretching a curve into this flat piece here. This is going to get trimmed down a little bit later. It doesn't need to stick all the way over that edge. That'll be once we glue the uh, top piece of leather down to it. That's a little ways off.
bad set on that one. I'm gonna grab my rivet cutter. Just on the halfway mark. Oh well. Bound to miss set one or two of these events on the way. doing this I guess I might as well think about and talk about what the next step is going to be. I think the next thing we need to do is get the foam fitted out for this, trimmed to the right size, and then the plan is to take the, the top layer which we're going to use kind of a heavy but softer bullhide leather, black in this case, and we're going to be laying that over the foam and gluing it around the edge to this uh, this underlay strip that we're putting on here and then we're going to take it to the machine and hopefully stitch it all the way around the edge knock on wood without any trouble it's going to go nice and smooth <laughs> famous last words Got myself. Yeah, watch yourself. These kind of rivets are sharp on the underside. Just uh, put your hand across it and slice you up real quick. All right. camera but no I can't see that. Alright.
myself. I'm going to get me a Band-Aid on after this. I'm going to cut the film. There we go. back around to the end. Before I go any further, I need to thin out where it's going to cover these front three holes, but I'm not going to be able to thin it if I rivet it too close. So that's the most I'm going to need for sure. And I'm going to want to start thinning it right about there. So let's get the skiver out again. See how we're going to finagle this into a position that I can skive on. There we go. Awkward, but we're doable. There we go, and that plus the other end together should be right about as thick as the single layer. All right, a few more holes. Then we can move on. how we're going to do this front bit. Hmm. Not going to be easy to get these all lined up here. I think I'm just going to overlap the front two. It's not going to make that turn all the way. All these chains of plans mid-project, -pro it seems. They usually seem to figure themselves out. So we're going to do these two. There. Just fits, just barely. That uh, bracket on the bottom there is just getting in the way of the uh, anvil on the machine. But it, it does make it. Let's see if the other side does the same. Alright, that goes in here. set good. Now we got to figure out where the hole's going to go on these. We're going to go, needs a lot of stretch here, so we're going to try and curve this piece of ladder go here, stretch it, and the opposite for this one. 
one of the reasons I thinned this stuff up a little bit was so we could get a more stretch out of it. Okay, so that one can go right there. This one go right here. to the machine. Now this could also be riveted by hand. I mean having this raised up anvil post does help a lot that the machine has. But all of these rivets could be done with uh, something like Tandy's uh, Jiffy rivets or the, the post and cap style rivets. Um, you could even Chicago screw it if you wanted to, although I'd recommend putting uh, some Loctite in there because once you seal this up, you're not going to, if it, a screw comes loose, you're not going to be able to take it off or replace it. Okay, so we're going to take this end, and I'm going to trim off this excess here, where these two front pieces overlap. Makes for a pretty nice and clean joint there. Now there's our finished piece here. I'm going to go get the uh, foam ready, and I will be uh, right back. Okay, I am back here with the uh, foam ready to go. We're using a piece of one inch, kind of a high density upholstery foam that I use here at the shop. Check the camera, yeah, that's good. And uh, so first step is we gotta get this the right shape and size for here. Probably would have been easier in hindsight here to get this piece cut and measured before I put this uh, leather strip on the bottom, but we're gonna make it work. Again, I'm kind of doing this on the fly here. So first step thing I'm going to do is take some of my spray glue, and apply some to the bottom of this piece of upholstery foam here. Not too much because we're going to be taking it back off. And then I'll put a little bit on the seat pan here. I want everything to kind of stick together. We're going to be gluing it pretty well in the end. All right, let that sit for a second or two. Ooh, smells good. <laughs> this is a uh, uh, web foam uh, spray foam adhesive. Uh, 3M makes a good one. You can get it to the hardware stores. All right, so we are going to be setting that down, pressing it down into the contour of the seat. Trying to do it evenly so we don't get any puckers or gathering around on it. There we go. Now, I need to trace it out. We don't. We want it to be the same shape and size as the pan, not the pan plus this extra uh, piece of leather I riveted on here. So I'm gonna kind of pull that back and trace it with a sharpie here, right up in there. back enough to see that edge pretty easily. My thumb doesn't get in the way. There we go. Around here. All right, now that we got that shape, Set. We can peel this back off before it sets too well and tears when we pull it off. And there's our pattern. Essentially, we're going to smooth out this tracing a little bit. And then I'm going to cut this with the old electric turkey knife. They make some specialty foam cutters, but this one's always worked well enough for me.
see it. I'm trying to keep this pretty, uh, pretty perpendicular to the foam. We don't want to cut at an angle. We're going to go with one more layer on top of this. I want something a little bit softer topping it off. So I'm going to use a piece of this about half inch, three eighths to half inch thick, uh, also a kind of an upholstery quilting foam. It's got this cheesecloth like fabric on the back for if you're uh, stitching through and quilting designs into the top layer. We're not going to be doing that here, but it's a little bit softer than the yellow foam. So it makes a nice topper and able to thicken the seat up by a little bit more. I don't think this one inch is quite thick enough. All right, so we are going to glue, let's see, there we go. Try to keep that on the foam and off the table. can too, we're running low. All right, let's see, we'll set that down there. And right there. Press it down nice and neat and cut off the excess. Now because of this fabric on the back, the uh, the electric knife doesn't really work well, so we're just going to do this with scissors. step will be to glue the foam to the seat for good this time. So we're going to actually put a decent amount of glue on here. And on this piece, especially in these little curved spots here and around the front of the seat, it's going to need to be glued pretty well to keep the foam from wanting to curl up and flatten out. Okay, let that sit for a sec. Get the glue ready to stick. This stuff takes about 30 seconds to a minute before you can stick it together well. All right. See if I can get this centered up here. Right there. Oops, 
pike are doing pretty good. Let's see. Right on. Seem to be balanced. And a little over here it needs to be pulled down. All right. Press that in nice and tight throughout the whole seat. This is going to get compressed a fair amount by the bull height as well when it gets stitched down. So, there we go. Alright. I'm going to go around and just round off that edge a little bit with the scissors. Help it make a nice curve and the leather rolls across it. Okay, got that set up. So, next is going to be the uh, putting the leather on, getting that in place, gluing it, clamping it up, and then we're gonna stitch it in place. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back, and uh, we are ready to start putting the top piece of leather on this seat. Let's see, this is what we're using here, black bullhide leather. It is probably about a 7-8 ounce thick. It's really soft, but, uh, but heavy duty leather. Real tough stuff, got a nice grain to it, and I think it'll look pretty nice on this seat. So, we just gotta figure out where we're gonna cut this guy. We want something nice and clean. We don't, it does have a lot of little scars and tick marks on it, this leather, so we wanna pick out a nice clean piece, piece and up on this end is the back. This is the belly side of it. And it's a little firmer on the back than the belly. And I want a bit of stretch. So I'm thinking this section right here, there's a bit of a scar in this spot right here. So we're gonna try to avoid that. And I think we can do it right here. I'm gonna overcut this a bit. I'd rather waste a couple dollars worth of leather than come up a penny short. There we go. All right, let's flip this around. And start cutting. Here's our leather, here's our seat. This is gonna be placed and glued on top of here. And then we're gonna work this down and try to glue the edge of this leather to that under flap that we put down there, nice and snug and even all around. So, let's see. Ooh, that is gonna be a stretch at the bottom there. So let's get started here. First thing I'm gonna do is get some glue on the foam, spray glue on the foam and on the uh, center part of this leather. Glue that down so we can get all the wrinkles out and get the leather nice and tight into the contour of the seat. Then we're going to use a bit of uh, contact cement, a stronger glue uh, that I brush on around the edges of the overpiece and the uh, little under trim. And then we're going to stick it together, or attempt to stick it together, and clamp it in place nice and snug. So here we go. I got three cans of this. They're all about a quarter full. Let's see if we can make it through if we got enough. Get it around. 
around on the sides a little bit too. Okay, same thing, let it sit for a minute, and then we're gonna stick it. Stick it to it. Right. It's still a little wet. Tea break. Ah. get a lot of shots of this. Alright, smooth from the inside out. It's going to need to be a lot of stretch right here on this inner curve part of the seat. Um, so we can try to take much from that, from the back area and curve it forward as we can to give it extra material right here. close in that area, but I think we can do it. All right, now that we got that in place nicely, let's take this over. I am going to trim off a lot of this excess, which I'm not going to need. There's less, less material to be putting glue on. But still, a fair amount more than I'm gonna, than I'm going to need, and then again, this needs to really press down a bit here. So I'm not going to cut any off of there because I might need every bit of that length. There. Okay, we can trim a bit there on this side. There we go. All right. Next step is putting on some glue. There it is. Where did I put that? All right. You sure you got some good ventilation? This stuff's got a strong, strong smell to it usually. Almost around to the beginning here, and then we're going to put some on the underside trim piece. We want this to be a good, strong joint because there's going to be a 
fair amount of stress on it until we get it stitched in place. That's why we're going to glue it well and I'm going to clamp it real good. Hammer all the seams down well. And then again, hopefully we can just take it to the machine and it'll sew all the way around the edge nice and easy. Alternatively, you could also, uh, you know, lacking a sewing machine, you can certainly hand punch, uh, punch and hand sew this seam here. Just going to take you a little bit longer, uh, but shouldn't turn out any different than, you know, any different quality or any worse than if you were to hand sew it, or the machine sew it. In fact, a lot of time, if you have the time, and so it comes out a little neater because you're going a bit slower and paying more attention to every individual stitch. Alright, glue is on. I am going to uh, take a short break and let this set up and then uh, as soon as the glue is ready to stick together I'll be back. Alright. We are back, the glue is set up a little bit and ready to stick down. So I'm going to start, let's see here, usually start in the centers. I want to keep this bit of a curve down and then out if I can. We're going to pull that down snug, but not too tight. And I'm going to kind of pinch it in the middle. I'm going to work out to the sides a bit and then in the middle of those two points and middle again. Try to keep this even. I don't want to be tighter on one side and pull the foam down flatter than it is on the other side. Alright. Hold the middle and pressing this snugly into place. This back side there's not a lot of tension on so it's not pulling it, trying to pull the two pieces of leather apart much there. But I have a feeling it really is down in this area. So next I'm going to switch to the front here and pinch that down on the sides and I am pulling this back a bit because I need as much excess material in this area so I'm kind of squeezing it in so that this has more material to fold down. even and out. All this excess here is going to get trimmed off at first to the level of this piece and then probably sanded down a little more until it's a nice even amount. Okay, now we're going to deal with these little side areas. Up against the table, pull it down. is where I'm going to need the clamps. So, fortunately I've got a whole bunch of these at the shop. They come in real handy. Let me pull that up to there and get some clamps on it. This is another case where bull hides soft stretchiness really comes in handy. It's nice thick leather and tough but it also flexes quite a bit letting you pull it tight around an area like this. Okay, one side. Now let's get to the other. I don't know if you can hear it but my dogs are pretty upset at me. We usually close up the shop and head home at five and it's uh, getting Getting closer and closer to seven right now, and we haven't left yet. So, if you hear them in the background, that's because they're uh, they're saying, "Hey, Dad, why, why are we still at the shop? I want my comfy couch." It's a little little bit wrinkled. I'm gonna pull that up, try to smooth it a little more. Okay. 
Let's go flip it over. Man. There we go. Clamp in place. take these pliers here, these smooth, smooth drawed uh, pliers here that are really good at pinching and tightening glued seams. So I'm going to go all the way around here, most of the way around at least, clean up that edge. crease there a bit more well defined. here I don't like it you can see that pucker there so let's pull this up a bit I think I need to stretch this over a bit more still sticks or if I got to reapply. Trouble with this glue, sometimes if you pull it apart, you need to apply it again. But that looks like it'll do the trick. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm going to want to know where this edge is so I can sew right up against it. Go around here. There we go. So next step here. Now let's see. I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna need the clamps gone. So hopefully they've done their job by now. Pinch that real good. Okay. This side. Okay, time to trim off the excess top layer right even with the edge of the underlay piece. And right on this inside curve, I'm going to grab one of my knives. It's going to be a lot easier to cut this inside curve with one of these little hooked leather cutting knife.
Seat is set there and ready for stitching. I will uh, be right back as soon as I get the sewing machine ready. Alrighty, uh, this is the sewing machine we're going to be used. I got this pretty recently at my shop. It's a uh, Cobra Class 2918 pocket stitching machine. A uh, real handy tool because it lets you sew in different directions. You can slip a boot or a sleeve of a jacket on here. But in this case, it's going to be make it a little easier to get around these tight curves. <coughs> hey, Luna. As I can uh, go around these, uh, you know, without a flat table, I can put the seat a little bit lower on this side and work it around the edge. And it can handle pretty, pretty thick stuff. Um, this is one of the thickest I'm going to be sewing on it so far. I've only had it about a month now. Uh, so let's see how she does. I've got a heavy black thread in there. I'm going to start our stitch at the front, right about there, in place, and let's see how it works. I'm going to try and keep it right up close to the edge of the foam, and just pray I don't run the needle into the pan at any point. Actually, I'm going to lock the foot in place so it doesn't rotate on me since I don't need it to do that in this case. Ooh, really close fit right here. And we're about to go off the edge on the bottom there, so let's try to Correct this a bit. Well, there goes the needle. All right, let's fix that up and be right back with a new needle. Okay, new needle, machine's rethreaded. Continue where we left off. Gonna overlap that stitch a, about an inch, inch and a half of stitching, and here we go. Get through this tricky spot. Looking better. And slow and steady all the way around. All right. Back around right to the sixth side. I expect it to get probably just as tricky as that same spot on the first side. See if we can do this without breaking another needle. in with the match it up with the threads in the beginning of the stitch and gonna overlap the stitching a couple inches here there we go all right she's all stitched up all around the edges next stop back at the table all 
Okay, we just finished up the stitching the edge. I'm going to trim off the loose ends of the threads here. And now I need to by hand trim off the excess uh, about an even distance from the edge of that stitch, leaving enough between uh, the stitch and the edge of the leather to still bevel it and burnish, wax and burnish that edge. So I'm just going to take the scissors along here and carefully trim this up. side there we go any small imperfections in the or choppiness in my cutting I will be able to clean up after this on the belt sander also this little inside curve it's hard to get scissors in there so I'll probably take care of most of that with the belt sander extra careful not to angle my scissors too much and look like I'm cutting a fine distance on the front but on the underside actually be cutting right up against the uh, threads if not cutting through the threads so when you're cutting really thick leather that's something to keep in mind make sure your scissors are perpendicular to the plane of the leather not angled steeply and it's really easy to make that mistake when you're going around a curve like this I think you're going along just fine, and then you look at the bottom and you just cut all those stitches, and now you can't restitch it because you cut too much off. All right, I'm going to skip that section again. And let's see, this I got to do from here. Okay, I'm going to take this back to the belt sander. I don't have a good place to video that where it's at, so I'm just going to sand it real quick and come back to the bench when I got that done. Um, it's just a standard woodworking tabletop bench sander, four inch by 36 inch belt. And we're just gonna run this edge along that and clean up, make sure these uh, two pieces of leather are all nice and flush and smooth. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back from the sander and uh, ready to do a little bit of beveling on the edge. It is pretty thick stuff, so I'm going to see if we can use a number four edge beveler. Bull hide, it's soft, so it's a little tricky to edge, but we're doing it real close to the stitching, and it's stitched to firm leather, so that helps a bit. And because it's soft, we don't need to take a ton off for the burnishing wheel to be able to smooth it over and round it out. Just want to get the sharp edge off of it. here I mean everything about this little inside curve here is hard be it gluing it stretching it cutting it sewing it beveling it it's that little yeah and it's the same on a lot of different seats be it this kind of motorcycle seat or some bicycle seats um, that's that curve there we go. Getting around. There we are. And same thing to the underside. This helps to have something to lean that edge up against.
piece of thread I didn't cut. There we go. All right, edges rounded off nicely. Now it's time for some edge coat. That and that, and I'll need a rag. Okay, apply, apply a liberal amount of edge coat to that edge. You want it good and coated. Don't be sloppy with it, but it's definitely better, better I think, to have a little much than too little. that off, move to the next section, wipe off any excess, it just leaves a bit of a coated edge. it up there. Now as usual with edge coat we're gonna let this sit and dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah about 10 to 15 minutes should do until it's kind of dry and a bit rougher on the edge at which point we're gonna rub some wax on it and take it over to the bench grinder with the burnishing wheel and smooth that all out into a nice glossy smooth edge and then a little conditioner and we should be finished. Okay, we're back. Uh, the edge coat has dried enough on the edges. We're going to take this, uh, just a block of some uh, paraffin wax, plain like for candle making, and we're going to rub this on that edge until we get a bit of a nice white kind of frosting or glazing on it almost. And that'll be just enough to mix with the edge coat, lubricate the burnisher, and smooth this edge out. So let's apply the wax all the way around. go and let's take this over to the uh, burnishing wheel let's see if I can just turn the camera and slide it around we'll get kind of a kind of sort of view of my shop if you haven't guessed I actually have my, uh, my uh, camera here mounted on a little arm on a stool so not the best setup exactly but it works it under there okay so there is the edge or the edge burnisher basically just a, a bench grinder I've got these little wooden wheels attached to it that I have carved uh, different grooves into different widths I've got one set up right now that'll match the uh, thickness of this leather here let me see if that's gonna show up on camera Whoa, there. yeah that should do pretty good all right let's get this going I'm just going to work it along back and forth here until I see that the uh, edge coat and the wax have melted and smoothed out together into kind of a nice glossy edge. Now we're just going to go all the way around and do that.
careful not to tip this too far to one side or the other and have the edge of that wheel kind of burnish or burnish a mark into the top part of the leather. You really only want it contacting the side. And again, it's a little, as always, a little tricky right around that little inner curve. Basically, it seems if you're doing any of the process in that area, you got to go slow and be a little careful. The rest of the seat's pretty easy. By comparison. All right. So I can see what I'm doing without blocking the camera. Let me turn this around here. wider of the two uh, grooves right around the tip because that's where it's double thick uh, where we overlapped that bottom and it made that edge just a little bit thicker than the rest of it. whole edge finished let's bring it back to the table and polish that up real quick all right here we go back at the table all right I like to take a rag and kind of give it a little hand burnish gets any excess wax off and liquid wax that kind of splattered up and got onto the leather. This will rub it off and it just seems to make that edge a little bit smoother and nicer. There we go. And final step for this, or the edge at least, is take your edge coat one more time and give it a last top coat on there which is going to dry nice and smooth and shiny and really make that edge look crisp. Got to be careful not to Get your hands on the wet edge coat and get it on the leather. It comes off pretty easily with a little water before it dries, but once it dries, it is dang hard to get off, if not impossible, to get off of uh, your leather. So watch your hands when you're working with this stuff. The easiest way to screw up is you put your thumb in the wet stuff and then grab something, especially when a piece is a little hard to hold on to like this. Okay, let's see more there we're gonna let that dry come back give it a conditioning and show you what we got alrighty we are back uh, edges dried up nicely got a little bit of leather conditioner here it's always my last step when I'm doing a new seat or something just give it a nice polish so let's do that conditioner rag. Time to go pick up some new rags at the store. I think this was an old t-shirt. But it works pretty good. No lint. That's the key. All, most of my rags have a bunch of fuzzies that get on stuff. Alright. Here we are. The underside. And 
there we have it. One new leather tractor style seat recovered, stitched edges. Could also do this with a laced edge if you wanted to after you'd clamped and let the glue set really well, let it maybe set it overnight. You could go ahead and punch uh, holes or lacing slots through the edge and do a simple whip stitch with a heavy leather lace or use a flat thin lace and do a nice de decorative edge braid. That would look real good. Um, a lot of different things you could do. Key really just being a nice heavy but soft flexible leather works the best for this. So there you go. Um, hopefully I will uh, not wait a full year between videos like the last time. Um, yeah, I'll try and uh, try and post stuff more frequently if I can. If I can figure figure out how to get these videos edited and everything uh, a little easier than the last time. So uh, yeah, I will uh, see you all again soon. Hopefully, thanks for following and watching uh, through the whole video. If you did, I appreciate it. Again, this is Finn Hansen at Finn's Leather Shop in Morro Bay, California.